Hi, I'm John Holden. Welcome to Earth. Our next story takes us here to the Mississippi Delta and the cotton fields of Louisiana. You know, I love cotton. They're what all my jeans and tees are made of a classic choice and a sustainable choice. You know, the longer you wear clothes, uh, the less you have to buy new clothes, right? But one thing about making fabric from a natural product like cotton is it can negatively affect the environment unless it's grown sustainably like it is here in Louisiana, as you're about to see. The U.S. cotton industry produces more than $21 billion worth of products every year from about 20 million bales of cotton. One bale can be used to make 200 pairs of jeans or 1,200 t-shirts. And a lot of that cotton comes from the Mississippi Delta region. So why is this area so important to cotton? Well, and, and cotton is, is such a key part of the rural economy here. And, and when we look at the Mississippi Delta, it counts for about 25% of U.S. cotton production. Good soil for cotton production, good climate for cotton production. It really does continue to be an economic engine for these rural economies. But unless done sustainably, growing cotton can cause serious environmental impacts from such things as water consumption, fertilizer pollution, and soil depletion. However, today's cotton farmers are seeking continuous advancements in terms of the environmental footprint of cotton. Because cotton needs very warm weather to grow, places like this near St. Joseph, Louisiana are ideal for growing it. This field belongs to Kellen Lee, and this particular 600-acre farm of his is actually comprised of an island of cotton. All the watershed from this from this farm goes into this surface water, into this lake, and uh, that's also where our community gets our drinking water from. So it's very important for us to uh, be sure we're keeping keeping our our soil in in our field with cover crop use, uh, minimum tillage, things like that, um, to minimize our runoff as much as possible. Sustainability and transparency in the cotton industry are particularly key for clothing brands that use cotton cloth in their signature fashions, like Gildan. Sustainability is very important to us. It's been knit into our fabric all the way from the fiber we buy to the finished product. So it makes most sense, since the majority of our fiber we purchase is U.S. cotton, for us to be able to track and report and explain to everyone what we already know about how sustainable the U.S. growers are. These kinds of initiatives have moved from nice to have to business imperatives. The U.S. Cotton Trust Protocol has built upon the efforts of brands, retailers, and U.S. cotton growers over the past 35 years to provide people assurance that cotton is a reliable, sustainable product. When we look at the protocol, it is a, a farm level a program that is designed to engage cotton farmers and drive continuous improvement in U.S. cotton production. And we see that as one of the key pillars. One of the other objectives of the Trust Protocol is to bring quantifiable measurement, uh, real data that we can provide to the brands and retailers that, ca that can show how our producers are improving and how we're reducing the environmental impact. That's why today's cotton growers are constantly looking to improve their operations with new technologies and regenerative sustainable agriculture, including brothers Mead and Marshall Hardwick of Tensaw Parish, Louisiana. They're fourth generation farmers with over 20,000 acres of farmland who want their tradition of cotton farming to continue for generations to come. What we had to do was become more efficient and be more sustainable. And these things that are considered sustainable are things we've been doing for a long time because it's what's kept us in the game. It's helped us make a profit to continue on. 
We are precision agriculture uh, to the T, I guess you could say. We try to ingrain that into every aspect of what we're doing, whether it's applying herbicides, insecticides, seed, fertility. We soil sample uh, one third of our acres every single year. And the idea there is to, what, let's understand what's in the soil. Let's only put back in there what we think is needed for the next year. We do that every single year. Most people think sustainability means spending more money. But if we use less and we can get the same output or more, that is sustainable. That's sustainable for me in the business and that's sustainable for the environment. 30 years ago, this little valley that we're in, the production practice at the time would have been to farm every acre that you had produced as much as you can, farm right down to pretty much the, uh, the bank here. From a conservation perspective, we were losing a lot of soil. There was not much habitat in terms of wildlife, and we were really eroding the landscape. So as you can see, we have removed probably close to 50 acres of production on these fields from either side of us. This cover and these, this natural vegetation has been returned, really gone a long way to stabilize the environment that we have here. We have data that goes back now over 35 years that shows that shrinking environmental footprint as our producers have become more efficient with water usage, more efficient with uh, energy usage, uh, conserving the soil, reducing greenhouse gas. Uh, so we, there is a good track record, but it's not about where you've been. I think for us, it's all looking forward and trying to see how we can continue to, to drive continuous improvement going forward. You know, cotton farming is hard work. Farmers are at the mercy of droughts, floods, hurricanes that can wipe out a crop right after it's planted or even right before harvest even hits. But you know, you're gonna find that cotton farmers are passionate. Farmers like Mead and Marshall because they care about sustainability and their crops and I think the earth does too.